coming into this thing was to do the best I could do in every event, not compare myself to other people. So um, I said I'm just going to run as fast as I can run, like the smartest way possible, and thank, thank God for Barb because um, she helped me through that whole thing. And 150 meters left, I heard Ashton and the other heptathletes saying, you can win, you can win, and I had no idea where anybody else was, but I was like, you know what, if I'm doing the best I can do in every event, like I have another gear here for another 150, so. Did you hear Ashton on the home straight too? And he made a, he sprinted over there. I couldn't. Catch it coming by. No, I think I was like delirious by that yeah. point. Honestly, I crossed the line, saw my time, and then I was looking at the clock as everybody else finished. Yeah. And I, I I could see see the Ukrainian girl coming across in 220 something, but I couldn't in my mind even figure out if that was 10 seconds. Like literally, I, yeah, I was just like, it was all a blur. Great, great. There's always talk of the, the Hayward effect in Eugene. Yeah. The home crowd does here. Effect. Did you feel here? Definitely, yeah. Um, I could hear people. I never hear people in the 800 unless they're like right there. I could hear people on the curb with 150 left saying go for it. Like I could hear them saying my name. That's that's what's cool about indoor because it's so intimate. Bray, what does it mean to get the first global title and for Rio? Yeah. Um, I think mostly for Rio this shows me where I am. Um, I, we know what I need to work on. I'm not rust proof in all of these events yet so now I just have to figure out how to iron those out and again like the the gold medal is great but I'm most proud of myself for um, executing this competition mentally the way that we've planned I plan with right, my you, go. you guys can ask more questions at the press